edition of Mumbai International Festival opens in the presence of some of the most important filmmakers of our time. So mindful of the fact that the Indian documentary film Feelings this evening, and I accept this Lifetime Achievement Award. Of course, I'm overjoyed that our work is recognized and deeply grateful to all those who must have struggled to make this come about. I have been very lucky. I was lucky to have the parents, the family, and the friends that I did who gave me such unstinting and ungrudging support through all the times when our work was frowned upon by the authorities and ignored by the market. I'm also lucky that despite opposition, many of my films got recognition both in India and abroad. Here is where my mixed feelings come in. My films are nothing without the causes they speak about and the people they champion. It was about political prisoners in independent India. Today, our jail population continues to rise as our system refuses to grant bail even to those who have been in detention without trial for years. Even as I speak, many prisoners have gone on a hunger strike to protest this long denial of bail. The World Bank to stop further funding to the project. Today the dam is almost complete, yet the water, instead of reaching the thirsty and drought-prone areas, is being electrically pumped to serve water parks and promenades in urban Gujarat. War and Peace 2002 was about India's tragic decision to join the infamous nuclear club and become a nuclear weapons wielding state. As Pakistan replied in kind, the region plunged into nuclear insecurity and uncertainty. Today our departing Prime Minister, when recounting the few achievements he is proud of, lists at the forefront a nuclear deal with the USA that lifted an embargo on India's nuclear program and allowed it to plan a huge increase in nuclear plants across the country. In the wake of Fukushima, when the world is finally waking up to the fact that nukes are not only unsafe, they are unaffordable, India is busy buying second-hand Chernobyls to populate a tsunami-susceptible coastline. Jairin Comrin 2012 was about the music of protest of a people who for thousands of years were denied education, forced to do menial jobs and regarded as untouchables. According to official government figures, every day somewhere in this country, two Dalits are killed and three raped. In our film, one of the many groups protesting these atrocities was the Kabir Kalamanj, the KKM. By the end of the film, KKM members had been forced to go underground after police began to brand them as Maoist Naxalites. After Jaivim Comrade won awards, including one at the last MIF, and was extensively written about, we formed a KKM defense committee. Finally, the KKM decided that with civil society support, it was worth it to come overground. They did a non-violent satyagraha by singing outside the Maharashtra Assembly and were arrested. Three of them eventually got bail thanks to a high court order. But ten months later, three others are still in jail. They, gave, they all gave themselves up voluntarily, expressing faith in democracy. Their only weapons were their songs. Today it is really our political and judicial system that is in the dock. So I say that my feelings are mixed. Added to the bitter sweetness of this moment is the fact that my parents to whom I owe everything are not here anymore. Nor are many of the protagonists in my films, people like Pujari Laldas, Jaimal Singh Panda and Shahid Vilas Bhogri who gave their lives for what they believed in. And during this long journey, I have also lost many of my beloved and admired friends in the filmmaking fraternity. People, I'm sorry for taking so much of your time. I'm deeply grateful that my work and through it, the work of so many others has been recognized.